bra 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 It's rubbish attempt at creating a factual acronym Tuesday. Well, hey there everybody. It's time to take a look at a game that I have been looking forward to reviewing for quite some time. And it's possibly one of y'all's favorites as well. I, I think it's highly unlikely that there is not someone in this community who uh, does not love this game. Like, guaranteed, people who watch this video, not all of yous, some of yous still need to learn. But those of you who know are like, oh my god, yes, yes this, absolutely this. So, Bard's Tale, which is not related to Bard's Tale, the trilogy, but yes it is, but also no it isn't, and contractually so, uh, it's complicated, we'll get into it. Th this is a game that we are looking at today. And there's a lot of games called Bard's Tale. I'm gonna sort of break it down a little bit, because this is kind of important for you to know, like, where this game came from and kind of how it came in being. Um, because very much like, uh, you know, the ghost story anime, uh, the English overdub that is of legend, yeah, those of you who know, no, those of you who don't, you, it, if you watch anime at all, if you've ever enjoyed any amount of anime, you need to find, and I believe you can watch it on YouTube, the, uh, ghost story English overdub. <laughs> it is, uh... Let's just say it, it's not the same story as as people got in Japan, but it is arguably so much better. Anyway, regardless, let's not get sidetracked on anime when we have such a juicy morsel in front of us here in this game. So, let me explain where this all comes from. So, back in the 1980s, I believe 1985, uh, there was a series of games that kicked off, uh, released by Electronic Arts, uh, which form what is now known as the Bard's Tale Trilogy. Uh, there were three games, and I believe it was 1985, 1986, and 1988 that those games came out um, and formed the trilogy. And these are some fairly difficult old-school RPGs, which hail back to the days when RPGs were made to be RPGs, you know, of the tabletop variety. So everybody was trying to Dungeons and Dragons it up, even though, you know, Dungeons and Dragons was not the only game in town, you know, d don't you go forgetting about GURPS and uh, other things that were happening at the time. I don't know too many of the other things that were happening at the time, but I do know about GURPS. Um, I have GURPS. It's like, I can look at it right now. It's on my shelf. Anyway, regardless, gotta, gotta have the GURPS core rulebook and then, you know, get you some expansions for whatever type of RPG and you want to RPG. It's an incredible system, really. Uh, if you're, if you're a tabletop playing person, you should get to it. Now, I'm not going to waste time talking tabletop RPGs because that's an entirely different channel that I'm not willing to make. But, uh... Yes, the original Bard's Tale trilogy was very much like old school RPGs. It just had those graphics where it's like, okay, now you're in this part of the hallway, what do you do? Now you're in this part of the hallway, what do you do? You know, and that's kind of way the games played out, except they were tricky monkeys full of secrets and, you know, you really had to read the manuals. And yeah, that's uh, entirely different from what this game is. This game is so much not that, it's like astonishing how much not that this game is. Um, so, yeah. Um, but the original Bard's Tale was incredibly popular, and it was ported to everything. If it was something that could play video games in the 1980s, there is a port of Bard's Tale on it. Like, that's just how it is. And so, yeah, the, every platform, all of the platforms, it was one of those games. It was like Pac-Man, you know, <laughs> like what didn't have Pac-Man back in the day? Uh, everything had to have it, um, even the 2600, which couldn't run it. Anyway, regardless, um, so you have this 1980s hit, and then you have this long gap of time, and then in 2004, you get this little monkey, uh, which is also called, called the Bard's Tale, which... People who remember the original might have been like, oh, I think I know what this is. Um, except for, n n no, there's no way you could have. There's no way you could have. 
uh, nobody could have seen this coming um, because this game is like the original serious RPGs, like old school serious RPGs. This one, silly monkey, like so silly. It is, it's hard to even describe what a silly little monkey we've got on our hands today. Um, those of you who've played it, you're like, I know. And those of you who have not, you're about to know. And if you like the silly monkey, I, you got to get this game at some point when it's on sale at full price. Ugh, <laughs> I don't know if I'd be willing to pay that knowing that it goes on sale. Wait and get it on sale. Anyway, regardless, back to the point, to the point, no faking, cooking MCs like a pound of bacon. In this particular, oh, so this Bard's Tale came into being. So Brian Fargo, who like founded or co-founded, I'm not sure which, Interplay, uh, he left Interplay and created In Exile, uh, which the X, it's not E-X-I-L-E, it's one big X because, you know, bands like In Excess and whatnot, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and Fargo, who created Interplay, had created maps for the original Bard's Tale trilogy. And so when he creates his new company, In Exile, this is the first game that he brought. He's like, let's do Bard's Tale. And for reasons that I do not understand and cannot figure out, and honestly don't even really care that much to know, it'd be fun to know, but I don't, like, have to know. Um, <laughs> so they took the Bard's Tale and contractually, for whatever reason, they couldn't have it in the same setting, aside from the fact that it's still Scotland. Um, but the original Bard's Tale happened in, like, factual Scotland. Like, the main town is a, the ruins of a former town in, like, old medieval time Scotland. So, like, the original, yeah, goes back Scotland hard. This game, also Scotland, um, but not contractually not allowed to have any of the original characters, any of the original storyline. I'm not sure how that goes. It's just legal battles, I assume. Like, you know, EA still owns the original rights or whatever. But then, interestingly, later on, In Exile went on to create the remastered versions of this same, of the uh, original trilogy. So, there you go. <laughs> and they released those in 2018, much later than they released this game, which is back in 2004. Um, does that make sense? Probably not, but if you go back and listen to it a few times, it'll make sense. Um, so, in this version of The Bard's Tale, we've got all of the history behind us. <laughs> like, we don't need to think about Brian Fargo anymore. Um, so, this version, you play a character that I love so much. Because I love a, a character who is, like, irredeemable. Like, just a bad person who is also the hero of the story. I love that. You know, think Bruce Campbell type stuff, you know? So rude, selfish, only looking for his own gain. That kind of a thing. Um, you know, I love this kind of character. You know, the, from the first time that I read um, uh, Vanity Fair uh, by Thackeray, um, yeah, Becky Sharp, the main character, the first time you meet her and she's chucking a gift that she was just given out the window of her carriage into the mud in full view of the person who had just given her this gift. And she's just doing it because she's like, I know it pained you to get this for me and you didn't even want me to have it, but I want you to know what I think of you as a person. And she chucks it into the mud. And from that moment, I'm like, I, I think I'm in love with Becky Sharp as a character because she's so, like, <laughs> irredeemable. Irredeemable. By the end of the book, she's still doing everything that she'd always done that made her such a terrible person and so unfit for good society. And she doesn't care. And that's, like, perfect, you know? Uh, think Ferris Bueller if you don't read books so much. Um, anyway, so that's the kind of character that you're playing. You just don't give a crap. And all of your options are either, you know, sad, sad face theatrical mask or happy face theatrical mask. And if you go happy face, you might say something kind, but you might also say something really snarky that flies over the head of the person you're saying it to. 
like really sarcastic. Um, and if you choose the other option, you'll either say something outright rude or you'll say something that like seems half sincere, but obviously isn't. Um, so like, yeah, you're just this terrible dude, just a horrible person. And, um, yeah. And you go to all of the standard RG, RPG places, you know, dungeons at people's houses where you could just root through their belongings. And if you do, you get scolded by the narrator and then you talk back to the narrator and are like, what? <laughs> it's fine. Um, and th this whole breaking of the fourth wall that happens where your character is talking to the narrator directly. This happens all the time, and it's what makes this game is so, so funny. Um, because they directly call out the dumber stuff in RPGs that literally would not happen. You know, things like non-human creatures with really good weapons and loot in their innards. You know, uh, NPCs who tell you to press buttons on your controller or keyboard. You know, things that would never happen in the real world, but happen all the time. In RPGs, you're supposed to be like, oh, this is Cloud, and he's about to go on this great journey in this crazy cyberpunk world, and we're, we're about to embark, and, you know, people that we fall in love with might die along the way, and this horrible thing, and, like, you know, it starts with them being like, hey, push X, <laughs> you know? It's like, why is this a thing? Um, anyway, so this game thumbs its nose at all of that stuff, and not just that, it's a silly goose. It is one of the silliest geese I have ever seen. And it just, like, for example, uh, you kill wolves. You know, that's one of the things you got to do. I kill one wolf. There's a red cloak, you know, a little red riding one. And, and then I kill another wolf and there's a basket inside of it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I know what's going on here. <laughs> but, like, this game is just full of such whimsy. And it's hilarious and fun and you don't know what is going to come out of your character's mouth at any given point because like like a good bruce campbell character he just does not care and he will say hilarious things that are only funny to him and the audience of course um so yeah that's super awesome so it's all ups on this game right well no uh so this is the remastered re-snarkled edition but the graphics do not seem upgraded at all. It looks like a game from 2004. Uh, the camera controls are bad and limited. Basically, everything that was not great about the 2004 release of this game is still a problem. Uh, the controls themselves take quite a bit of getting used to because they're janky as all get out. And basically, the only re-snarkling I see is that they re it to work with Windows 10 and 11, and that's about it. Um, and, and I guess they did include the original Bard's Tale trilogy, which I don't know contractually how that works out, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's an imperfect game, this is what it is. It's imperfect, but it is so, so lovable. And I am playing it right now, I'm going to play it through to the end. There are lots of games that I'll pick up, and I won't play through to the end until much later, sometimes years later. I'll just put it into a file where it's like, hey, I played this game and liked it. And I have so many games that, like, I don't always get to them. This one I am playing through to the end. Uh, because I have to. Because I, like, yeah, absolutely must. Must, must, must. Anyway, it, it's, it's so delightful. And I highly recommend it. You buy it the next time it's on sale. No questions asked. Wholeheartedly recommend uh, final score, we're giving it an 8 out of a possible 10 Theorbo players. Uh, what's a Theorbo? It's a really long-necked uh, Renaissance-era loot. Late Renaissance. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's a ridiculous instrument. And given the fact that instruments play... I couldn't even tell you all of the things about this game. There's instruments and stones and tokens and whatnots. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of, you know, RP, good RPGing in the game in addition to all the silly stuff. Um, but there are parts of it that are, like, borderline broken, so, like, you gotta take the good with the bad, that's why I'm giving it an 8 out of a 10. If they could make a version of this where everything is fixed, that would be a 10 out of 10. So, that's your next project, Brian Fargo. Go get it. Get after it. Anyway, people, thanks for being here for this one. I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.